What's wrong with this water? Would you drink it? Swim in it? Touch it? What you're looking at is an algae bloom in the Potomac River in Washington, D.C. The Potomac flows through our nation's capital, gathering water and pollutants on the way until it eventually deposits them in the Chesapeake Bay. As a result of pollution flowing in from various sources, the bay has been overrun by widespread dead zones. So, what is a dead zone, and how do they form? Dead zones are aquatic areas with so little oxygen that almost nothing can survive. They look like this, an underwater desert completely devoid of life. The process that forms them is called eutrophication. It starts when nutrients, like nitrogen and phosphorus, make their way into waterways through wastewater treatment and runoff. These nutrients cause algae growth to skyrocket, which leads to enormous algae blooms. As the algae dies off, bacteria use up dissolved oxygen in the water to digest the decaying algae. The water in these areas is hypoxic, meaning it has dangerously low concentrations of oxygen. The green area shows a healthy level of dissolved oxygen. As the level of oxygen drops, native species die off. The less hypoxic a system is, the quicker it can recover. Without oxygen to breathe, marine life simply suffocates. Dead zones cause enormous fish kills, wiping out seafood that entire industries depend on. Everything from fish to marine plants to microbes rely on oxygen. Although dead zones can occur naturally, they're aggravated by human activity. They typically form during the summer months when water temperatures are warmer and heavy rains move polluted runoff into local bodies of water. Since its discovery, the Chesapeake Bay dead zone has been growing quite steadily. The levels of hypoxia in the bay have been recorded since the 1930s, and it was one of the first of its kind to be identified in 1985. It's estimated that the bay's dead zones kill 75,000 tons of bottom-dwelling clams and worms each year, weakening the bay's food chain and depleting essential resources. The Chesapeake dead zone also strains the estuary's economic potential. The briny water used to be ideal for oyster fisheries, one of Maryland's most commercially viable industries. However, in the last 50 years, over 150,000 acres of oyster reefs have been lost. Usually, dead zones cover about 15 to 20 percent of the bay, but this varies from year to year. The bay's largest dead zone ever recorded was in 2011, spanning over 2,000 square miles. Scientists suspect that heavy rainstorms and sewage overflow caused by Hurricane Irene and Tropical Storm Lee had a strong impact. Keep in mind, though, that the Chesapeake Bay isn't the only area suffering from dead zones. Dead zones have been located in more than 400 ecosystems worldwide, covering over 150,000 square miles in underwater desert. The growing number of dead zones puts pressure on marine ecosystems. Dead zones are a clear proof of the impact humans have on their environment, as well as symptoms of climate change. Marine ecosystems are not only some of Earth's most beautiful treasures, but some of the most important. Imagine what effects a dead zone would have on a community, or on a country, dependent on fishing. The good news is that dead zones are fixable. Over 50 different waterways worldwide have seen dead zones shrink or disappear due to the efforts of cleanup projects. Likewise, in 2012, the Chesapeake saw the smallest dead zone since scientific recordings began. This year, in 2013, scientists report that the bay is on track for another smaller-than-average dead zone. So, how can we support the health of the bay? Pollution runoff from agriculture is a major contributor to eutrophication. Avoiding food grown with artificial fertilizers can make a big difference. Organic, local produce is a great alternative to pesticide-heavy commercial products. At home, you can even plant your own garden and use eco-friendly fertilizers. Stormwater is one of the main means by which pollutants enter waterways. Never dump toxic materials like paint and solvents into storm drains, or down any drain for that matter. Instead, take them to a nearby hazardous materials center. Consider donating a few hours of your time. Volunteering for cleanup projects makes a huge difference. The bay and other waterways can turn around, with your help. So, what will you do to help save the bay? Your everyday actions can help prevent dead zones. Every drop counts.